If you've seen my comment section, you've probably seen the doozy where someone tells me that I'm a Trumper and that I am way out of tune with reality and I live in an alternate reality that's void of the facts because all the lockdowns were under Donald Trump. What? Except they're not. See, here's the problem with that argument. Donald Trump has this pesky little thing called the Tenth Amendment that was in the way. Donald Trump had no power to lock anyone down in the United States. Donald Trump also had no power to deploy the military into states because of the violence that was going on in 2020. You might actually remember if, you know, your brain is bigger than the size of a bird, that Trump was talking about sending in military or National Guard or some kind of federal assistance like that to deal with the riots that were going on in 2020 and he did not. And the left was in a big friggin' uproar about it. And like, no, he can't do that. that oh, send the military in and it's the absolute evil. There's an argument to be made that you're right. That if Trump sent the military in to deal with civilian uprisings, that that would be wrong. It's funny that the Tenth Amendment somehow applies whenever Trump wants to send the military in to quash the riots, but it doesn't apply when Trump locked down? Oh. But what about Biden? What about gas prices? Biden's responsible for high gas prices, right? Well, the argument that leftists make against that is that Biden doesn't have a direct influence on gas prices. Biden doesn't set the gas prices. The global markets set the gas prices. Everyone has high gas prices. The difference between what Trump did and what Biden did is that Biden actually does have some power over gas prices. It's not direct. He can't just like reach down and tweak a little counter that makes the prices go up and down. But he sets policies that do affect fuel prices. Hell, he released a bunch of fuel from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve just to lower gas prices. Pretty direct control right there if you ask me. But ignoring that, he sets policies like whether or not you can drill for oil, whether or not you can build refineries, what lands are and aren't available for that. Biden does have some control over gas prices. Might be a bit overstated by right-wingers, though. The Tenth Amendment says Biden didn't do lockdowns either. Trump didn't do lockdowns. None of the lockdowns were done by the federal government because they aren't allowed to. It is not an enumerated power in the Constitution that the feds can just go in and make you stay in your house. But you know who can? The governor. The governor of your state has more power over you than the president of the United States does. The federal government has certain powers that are enumerated in the Constitution. Any of those powers that aren't enumerated in the Constitution specifically for the federal government fall back to the states or the people. Guess what that means? The state governor and the state legislature, they have the power. They have the real power. And who locked you down? Who were the people that were behind all of the lockdowns and the bad policies and the abuses of power? The police threatening to arrest people that were holding online sales in locked, closed business buildings. Democrat governors. Democrat governors were responsible. Largely Democrat-controlled legislatures were responsible for the lockdowns and the abuses during the COVID-19 pandemic. So yes, I am absolutely right about the lockdowns being Democrats' fault and them needing to be held responsible for it. You are both wrong and stupid for saying that Donald Trump was the one behind the lockdowns. The lockdowns were Trump's fault. I'm really tired of this thing where every single thing that happens while a certain person is in the presidential seat somehow becomes owned by that person just because it happens while they're sitting in the seat. There are powers that the president has and doesn't have. And you can't blame things that the president has literally zero control over 
on the president. The president does control policies that affect gas prices, that affect housing markets, that affect the overall economy, because the federal government, guess what? They have the power to regulate interstate commerce. And because of Wicker versus Filburn, a Supreme Court case that desperately needs to be overturned, the Commerce Clause has been extended to the point that the federal government can do things just because maybe it might affect the interrelationship between two states. That it, it just needs to stop. The feds have a lot of power to regulate the economy, but you know what they don't have? The power to lock you down. The power to tell you you have to get a vaccination. The power to tell you you have to mask up whenever you go outside. The power to tell Walmart that they can't sell seeds, but they can sell pre-boxed White Castle burgers from the freezer section. The feds can't do that, but your state governor can, and your state governor did, and you dumbasses in Michigan re-elected Gretchen Whitmer after she locked you up in your house, then called up a marina and said, oh, you're closed? Well, um, you know, I'm the governor, does that make a difference? Why don't you let me get on my boat while I'm telling everyone else they're not allowed to get on theirs? Although that was her husband that made the call, you still get the point. These people are very rules for thee, not for me. They'll set a policy and not live by it. People like that should be far away from any position of political power in this country. And that's why you should have voted the fucking Democrats out. But you didn't. The Democrats that abused you got voted back in. And that is stupid. If you voted for Democrats after all the things that they put you through, you are stupid. And if you come at me telling me that Trump is responsible for the lockdowns, Trump is responsible for the vaccine policies, you're full of shit. You know that you're full of shit deep down, but you won't educate yourself or you'll just willingly like selectively lose that education on a temporary basis so that you can try to beat me in some sort of rhetorical argument on the internet about it. No, your governor screwed you. Your legislature screwed you. They could have overridden the emergency powers of the governor and didn't. So why did you vote them back in? Because you're stupid. There is no other explanation for these people that are abusers being in power other than that you, the person who voted them back in, are stupid. And this is not just limited to Democrats. There are some Republicans, some rhinos, and some just people that have the name Republican, period, that happen to have decided, hey, lockdowns are actually a pretty good idea. Let's do it anyway. Those people, you elected those Republicans, you elected them and put them back in office, guess what? You're not electing Democrats, but you're stupid too. Why are you giving these people your vote? Why are you saying, yes, more of this? Yes, I would love it if you would stick an even bigger candlestick up my butthole without lube. Why? Why did you do it? Why are you doing it? Do you have some kind of problem? Do you have Stockholm Syndrome, a coping mechanism that's used whenever somebody is being abused on a prolonged basis and they have to deal with it somehow so they fall in love with the people that are harming them? That's what this reeks of. This is leftist Stockholm Syndrome. Nothing more. I'm Jody Bruce on Politics. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care.